sulfonylurea monotherapy is associated with a higher risk for all-cause mortality, cardiovascular events, and major hypoglycemic episodes compared with metformin, and that metformin may be a safer alternative to sulfonylureas even in patients with chronic kidney disease. Hi, I'm Reed Whitlock, and I'm a statistician at the Chronic Disease Innovation Center at Seven Oaks Hospital in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I am the lead author of an article titled A Safety Comparison of Metformin versus Sulfonylurea Initiation in Patients with Type 2 Diabetes and Chronic Kidney Disease, a retrospective cohort study, which will appear in the January 2020 issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. So it's well established that metformin is the most common treatment that individuals with type 2 diabetes initiate to lower their blood sugar. But for those with chronic kidney disease, guidelines often caution against metformin because of slower kidney clearance and a perceived increased risk of lactic acidosis, which although rare, can often be fatal. In place of metformin, sulfonylureas are likely to be the most common alternative for monotherapy. So we evaluated whether the risk for all-cause mortality, cardiovascular events, or major hypoglycemic episodes differed in individuals who were newly prescribed metformin versus sulfonylurea as first-line monotherapy and whether the presence or absence of chronic kidney disease modified these relationships. We answered this question using population-level administrative health databases for the province of Manitoba, Canada, through the Manitoba Center for Health Policy at the University of Manitoba. Now, our study had 22,000 people, and overall, after adjusting for age, sex, kidney function, comorbidities, and concomitant medications, metformin monotherapy was associated with a lower risk of all-cause mortality, cardiovascular events, and major hypoglycemic episodes compared with sulfonylureas. Now, if you look at the p-values of the interaction terms, you can see that the mortality benefit of metformin did attenuate in individuals with chronic kidney disease, but we found that chronic kidney disease did not modify the effect of metformin on cardiovascular events or major hypoglycemic episodes. So even though there were differences in mortality risk, depending on if an individual had chronic kidney disease, the risk shifted in such a way that the mortality benefit of metformin was neutralized and not reversed, and there were no differences in cardiovascular event risk or hypoglycemia risk, depending on your kidney function, which means that the overall finding of a risk reduction benefit for metformin applies to those with and without chronic kidney disease. How this finding relates to clinical practice is that it adds to a body of evidence that the pharmaceutical labeling and association guidelines that clinicians follow when they make clear clinical decisions should be re-examined, at least for individuals with an EGFR between 30 and 60, or moderate chronic kidney disease and that clinicians should not necessarily feel uncomfortable starting a patient with type 2 diabetes and moderate chronic kidney disease on metformin instead of a sulfonylurea. And what this means for patients with type 2 diabetes and moderate chronic kidney disease is that there is more evidence to suggest that they can safely initiate metformin and benefit from the cardiovascular risk reduction and not have to experience the potential harm of sulfonylureas in terms of hypoglycemia or weight gain. And the good news is that just like sulfonylureas, Metformin is available to patients at a cost that is relatively inexpensive. The next step in this line of research would be to look at more real-world evidence on this topic in other parts of the world, and as more observation time accumulates, to look at data on how some of the newer diabetes drugs, such as SGLT2 inhibitors, fare as monotherapy in patients with type 2 diabetes and chronic kidney disease in terms of safety events. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.